Hi everyone, my name is Faina and welcome back to another video where I analyze poetry on the CIE English Literature course for GCSE this year. Today let's talk about Waterfall, first some quick context, then summary, and then the line-by-line -line analysis. Loris Dorothy Edmund was born in 1924 and died in 2000s. She was a New Zealand poet. She published her first collection called In Middle Air only in 1975 when she was around 51 years old. Before that, she was busy taking care of her family and also teaching. Her selected poems published in 1984 won the prestigious Commonwealth Prize. She also became famous for her editorial work, most notably a collection of letters by Fairburn and Actually, in life she wasn't really religious, but a lot of her poems were used for religious context because some of the key themes were nature, of course. She isn't as famous as Browning from my previous videos, so there isn't as much to say about her, but I would personally comment about the things that she lived through like the events and how they impacted her work. So what do I mean when I say events? She lived through the Napier earthquake in 1931, of course the World War, and also the invention of the internet. The Napier earthquake in 1931 is considered one of New Zealand's most deadliest disasters, and actually I think it's important to take a quick look at what New Zealand was like in the 30s. The 30s were a hard time for everyone because of the Great Depression, so the mood would have been terrible for her to grow up in, especially since it wasn't that long after the war. I will attach a link to some history of New Zealand. It's actually unclear when Waterfall was published, sometime around after 1990, and I think that it's probably after the dissolution of her marriage and her husband leaving her. It's important to consider the context especially here, because Edmund said in an interview that a poem is a confrontation with an experience, not an idea, so I think that mentioning her personal life and the extent to which you think it impacted her work could be the difference for a better grade. The main themes in this poem are aging, love, and the passage of time, and of course how love transforms over time. What makes this poem so poignant for me is the imagery and how it's created through word choice and punctuation. In the poem, the speaker remarks about the poem in a very matter-of-fact way, so although technically you would think of the message as being sad and death and approaching and like this irreversible river, this inability to turn back time, this attitude towards death, just being a normal part of life, is very harmonious with the water and the nature itself. This is something I want to mention in my personal response, how I view nature as being something calm and tranquil. She says as the snow rages on The speaker says that they don't ask to be young again or to postpone death. It's just like remembering what happened and a sharp reminder to value the time we have even more so. The speaker talks about the water falling and how they met with their lover and how they live together until the speaker's partner leaves. We do not know the gender of the person, so you can refer to them as any way you want. For me, I refer to them as a she because, well, because of many of her poems contain an autobiographical nature, so I just kind of assumed <laughs> that uh, the narrator would also be a she. And I think the reason that it isn't explicitly stated or named any, any genders are like, are not present in this poem, it's to make this more universally acceptable and to resonate with more people. So I will analyze stanza by stanza and then zoom into individual lines. I do not ask for youth nor for delay in the rising of time's irreversible river that takes the jeweled arc of the waterfall in which I glimpse minute by glinting minute all that I have and all I am always losing as sunlight lights each drop fast, fast falling. The sentence is made to be long in order to not interrupt the overall flaws, so although there are many seizures throughout and enjambments to draw attention to certain words, the overall feel is uninterrupted. So although there's like a focus on individual water droplets, the waterfall flows uninterrupted. It's a power that can't be stopped. It's almost like even with all the pauses, the pauses perhaps being representative of all the tumultuousness of life, the river is really irreversible. It just can't be deterred. You can't stop this flow of life and the passage of time is an extended metaphor throughout the poem for time and life and it's constantly 
mentioned in regards to aging and death. I do not ask for youth nor for delay in the rising of time's irreversible river. So the speaker says that she's content and accepting of her current state. She cherishes the memories of her youth, so she does not ask for more youth. She has these memories and they're precious to her, but she does not wish to prolong the experience because it's enough for her. And actually the comma after nor, it stresses the word and it almost feels like uh, she interrupts herself and her flow to say to the reader who's wondering, well, what about living longer? That no, she doesn't want to do that. She views life as this organic passage of time and so she just doesn't want to interfere to it in any way. She recognizes how life flows constantly and how she's not the special one, how it can just be magically deterred for her. In Jeweled Arc, we have the imagery of something precious and shiny, something that she values a lot. We see how much she cherishes life and how much she sees the experience, actually the experience that humanity collectively values. The next lines through repetition accentuate how fast the time flows. So glimpse minute by minute and fast, fast falling. Glimpse is also a juxtaposition that sharpens the duration of time because glimpse is like a quick action, whereas minute by minute is something slow and stretching. By commenting on the preciousness of these moments and using the juxtaposition to prolong the overall feel of the poem, I think she makes it clear to the reader that the reason that she doesn't want to like live long or, or go back to youth and that she kind of just wants to get life over with is not because she derives no joy from life, it's not because she's depressed or anything, it's just because she views it as something organic and something that she has lived. Again, this theme is carried through every line and so for her, she views it as almost fascinating, as another part of the journey. It's honestly just the ever important question, would life be beautiful if it wasn't limited? Sunlight, lights, each drop fast. So the concept of sunlight is very important. Of course, sunlight is light and joy and each drop has this cheerful and energetic quality to it. Each moment is highlighted and made important. I do not ask for youth nor for delay is in iambic pentameter. It's the rhythm that we associate with love because of Shakespeare's sonnets and I think they show very well how the speaker's heart is beating. So when we get to the line dark pool below, it's a pause and it's almost as if the heart has stopped beating. So this is a commentary on the whole poem, but since I'm on the first stanza, I just wanted to mention it here since it's e it will be easier to continue on, that the rhythm is actually very, like looking at it now, it's very unsteady, but more often than not, the lines do end on an unstressed syllable and this is called falling rhythm. So to give an example, it's river, wait, <laughs> I didn't say that correctly, river, so it's like r is stressed, river, river, it's r, okay, r that is stressed, water, fall. So the last uh, syllable, even though it's of course quite sharp, it's actually not accented, it's waterfall and not waterfall. So this is called falling rhythm, again very very appropriate for a poem about water, specifically water cascading down. And in the last line, drop fast fast falling, the words are consecutively stressed, showing how the speaker is almost like pulled into the water. Considering the fact stanza 2 is talking about memories, I think this last line is perfect to show that the speaker is being pulled into these memories and she finds these memories specifically in the water after it pulls her in and so perhaps this is why she's observing the water, not only to look at the beauty of life, but to reminisce about what happened. And uh, also one final bit about sounds in the stanza before we move on. We talked about meaning and rhythm already, but just a quick closer look at sound. There are a lot of letter L's in the poem. This is called liquid alliteration. And it's basically when you just have a lot of words that start with the letter L. And because L is a very smooth rolling sound, it creates the sense of waves and of the water falling. So again, just the way that the author chooses her words, like I said in the beginning, this is what makes the poem as sharp as it is for me, because once you look into the individual techniques used in the literary sense, it all makes sense and it all comes off as this is, this is how we understand why the poem sounds the way it does and why we feel so transported to this waterfall that we haven't actually seen in real life. And there is also assonance, the repeated vowel u sound, youth, losing, 
drop it's there's a lot of o sounds and it's this assonance that creates a sort of wail it could represent the hum of water you know when you're near water there's just sort of a steady humming noise so i think this ooh is kind of synonymous with that too on to stanza two it's filled with the second person and it's a contrast to the first stanza where the focus is primarily on the speaker i do not dream that you young again might come to me darkly in love screen darkness where the dust of the bracken spices the air Moss, crushed, gives out an estrogen sweetness, and water holds our reflections, motionless as if forever. So obviously we have an indication that this is wishful thinking because young again and I dream. The atmosphere is very intimate with the words darkly and in love's green darkness. Again we have nature making a prominent appearance and I think what makes the scene so intimate is the suggested darkness of it. It's a continuation of seeing life as a part of nature because love is a part of nature. It's a green sort of darkness and also just the phrase green darkness itself creates a sort of murky feeling it plays with lightning a lot it's almost as if we can't see it clearly it's veiled it's a little bit hazy it's a sort of distortion and as if the reader is there tasting the dust of brack and spices Spices, I think here, can sound very familiar, very similar to bracken being spices as in the noun, like actual like food spices, and spices as in spices the, the atmosphere, so I think that's also an interesting usage of the dual kind of use of the word. Seeing these images and these smells, this adds to the overall feeling of nostalgia because we feel it so vividly, but we're not actually there. We're looking back from the future and we as the reader are looking back from a whole like other life and so it's the sadness that we can't just go back to it but it's sadness along with acceptance we recognize the beauty even years later the noun is dust the adjectives crushed and it seems like defeat the water holds our reflections motionless as if forever but still the memory feels more beautiful and more poignant than ever perhaps because of our tendency as human beings to romanticize the past we see the memory in stanza two quite literally colored and the smells add a hypnotic type of quality to the whole uh, memory and to the whole description. Astrogent means bitter and it's an oxymoron coupled with the word sweetness. The olfactory images in stanza 2 are for me at the forefront more so than rhythm, so there's really much less to analyze but it's a good stanza to focus on the individual words and the way that the author wields her language to create this powerful imagery. We only have five commas and one final full stop, so the memory flows uninterrupted more so than life itself as we saw in the previous stanzas and again we have this quality of it being uninterrupted, so although it has passed it now lives in its own kind of bubble. It exists in a perfect state inside the reader's head, it's clear for her even years later, so it just can't be interrupted by anything else because she has seen it and played it back so many times. There's a similar, I don't want to say rhyme, but I guess like half rhyme or similarity gen in darkness and sweetness, they both end with Ness, and this gives a focus to the dark and to the sweet aspects of it and here there's no sunlight but yet we have this dark memory that's also sweet so I think it's another way that the speaker explains her being so content with the process of living life because it, it's also like a sweet return to this calmness and tranquility this dark and this forgettingness it's still a lovely way for her to end her life. There's also a beautiful message that I see here that nature will remember you even if you fade away. It's as if it's forever. So there's a hopeful note that perhaps it recognizes them and maybe this is why when she sees the water, she plays the memory back. In this stanza, the sounds are far less liquid. There are a lot of B and D sounds, so plosive sounds, which make the whole stanza sound very sharp. This is another instance where the author contrasts something because although there are less assurance, the words are still sharp. The word choice particularly plays a part, as I said before, the connotations of green are rebirth and renewal, so this can be the author showing hope at both love, as in have, finding love again after her husband leaves, and life, as in there still be stuff, as in there still being life for her to live, and also when she dies the journey isn't completely over. Okay, so bracken means a fern, I'm not sure if it's cor correct, but I'm pretty sure it's a carcinogen and it's toxic, but in Asian countries it is considered a delicacy, I do have some friends eating 
bracken in a salad. It was used for animal bedding before and I think it shows that the bracken is dust that it has been trampled by love. Once again we have a contrast between life and continuing life and death. So there's less to say here about rhythm but let's continue on to stanza 3. It's enough now to come into a room and find the kindness we have for each other, calling it love in eyes that are shrewd but trustful still, face chastened by ears of careful judgment, to sit in the afternoons and mild conversation without nostalgia. In stanza 3 there is a sharp turn for the darker side of thing, a sort of approaching darkness, inevitable darkness, that's a fun thing for your Sunday, but uh, without nostalgia, so we're firmly out of this memory and this dream and everything becomes more sharp and more pragmatic almost. It's more resolved, it's more simple, it's more this is the way it is now. It's honestly an honest reflection it's honestly an honest reflection on the passage of time and the way that love transforms as you grow older because the speaker is calling it love but it's more of a kind of friendship and companionship so it's no longer this fierce fire of desire and passion that burns in use it's the kind of love that comes with companionship and with spending time together with understanding each other without words really without having the need to have these like burning and urgent and intense feeling because you're just used to each other right now the non-stop emotions have kindled out it's just not as dark and intimate anymore eyes are shrewd so they perceive the situation Situation, but they trust that this is still the right person for now and um, the face is chastened by judgment chastened means rebuked so kind of like told off and I think this is referring to how when you're in love you don't really see the flaws in the person you just view this view them as this perfect soulmate that you finally found after I don't know how long searching for them but it's been years and the speaker and her partner are used to each other by now so the novelty has worn off so there's not really this surprise and this haze of love has worn out so they can see each other for who they really are. They don't really surprise each other anymore and so the afternoons are filled with tame conversations. Again, it's not that explosiveness of youth that was punctuated by the plosive D sounds in the previous stanzas. They sit together calmly. It's not these kind of burning topics that are discussed during youth, this urgency to find out what the person thinks about any range of social issues and to get to know them better. No, it's more the kind of calm that comes with living together for a while, the kind of talk that's like, did you do the dishes? The weather is nice, let's go for a walk. Oh, did you hear about the new neighbor? It's the kind of routine calmness. The two live without nostalgia, so of course they recognize how calm they are compared to before, but they don't seem to regret it. it the energy is not the same, Yes, that fire is long gone, but they have enjoyed each other's company and they continue to do so because they are quite content to live in this calmness too. Yes, it's a different sort of emotion, but they are used to each other's presence by now and so it's a kind of soft companionship. So the speaker closed the previous stanza and points for us to live in the present and not so much the past. Yes, by all means, recognize the past, but recognize what you have now too. And however, the final stanza, looking at it, is more set in the future. So in this way, the poem mirrors life once more, the structure of life, aging, and death. And it's also important to note that in stanza 3 water isn't mentioned even a single time and this brings to mind the expression water under the bridge so their past quite literally remains in other chapters of their life however stanza 4 we are reunited with nature once more and as i said and as i said before when you're reunited with water in this poem that means that they're the life process continues, so they can't stay in the present forever either, which of course brings up a question, where should we live? The past, the present, the future, and how should we live? But when you leave me with your jaunting, sinewed by resolution more than strength, suddenly then I love you with a quick intensity, remembering that water, however luminous and grand, falls fast and only once to the dark pool below. We lament something only when it's gone. It seems that the speaker is incapable of feeling this burning passion when she's with her husband, but as soon as he leaves her, as soon as she recognizes that this part of their lives is over, then she feels this burning intensity, but it's already too late. I assume it's him since it's likely her husband and also fast uh, in uh, false fast is repeated one more time. As you remember, it was mentioned twice in the start. So now with, with it being mentioned one more time in the final stanza, again, we have the three, life, aging, and death. We close off the light with the dark pool and on a despondent note, however great the life is, there's always the pool. 
and there's always the darkness of the pool and this time when you fall you just can't rise back up the darkness is there this forgetting this end of life only the water will know you're there even though you're not actually in the pool this passage of time is done and so you join the others in the pool and i think as a person who responds this is one more thing to mention whether you feel that the speaker will be remembered by nature and not even not by nature but by other people and if it's possible for us to live on forever in the memories of others the last stanza is a definitive shift in the mood and of course it shows this unexpected twist this unexpected final event in life by connectors such as but and suddenly which signify to the reader that this turn of ideas and this turn of perception of the speaker has taken place almost as if while almost as if while expecting death it's still an unexpected visitor and another thing i'm not sure what jaunting means but i'm pretty sure that it's from the word jaunt which is like energy and spring in your step so i assume that jaunting is a word derived from this feeling but also this is this might be just me but for me this reminds me of jaune so i, I guess it could be like young in french or also yellow as in yellow being like happiness again jaunting is sinewed by resolution more than strength so the energy is fueled by resolution her husband leaves because he's determined to leave not because it's a harmful relationship or because he wants to like regain strength by leaving it but because he is just determined to rekindle love and to see life in a different way so here we see that kind of fork in the path of the river that whereas before we thought that both of them were content to enjoy their evenings together without nostalgia and live as old people and die harmoniously together now we discover that the guy is like yay let's try to rekindle that passion because i love that so he's going off in search of something else probably someone else whereas for her this harmony is important so she's although she recognizes that this renewal can be there she's not I don't think she will actively seek it in the end. His decision is like a hidden rock for her and I think it's left her very shaken and th with this feeling that this is just the way it is. You can also comment on whether you think this is autobiographical or not, this particular bit and whether you think it's her husband in the end. So this is just a reminder because I think this is an important thing to say. So yeah. Hope that wasn't too messy, there was a lot here and I kept coming back to the quotes, but yeah. Thank you for watching, please consider liking and subscribing for me to stay sane before exams. Good luck on your exams and I will be posting more on Wednesday, people from my school, so that we can fit in five, like three more poems <laughs> before the exams. So yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.